What a beautiful day at Patoka Lake. That's Patoka Lake, Wycliffe, Indiana. Southern Indiana. I thought I would drive here, bring a couple kayaks, and answer some questions that I see on Facebook all the time. Coming right up. Hit that subscribe button, please. Which kayak should I buy, especially if I'm a beginner? I brought my kayaks along. I'm hoping to answer a few questions for you. When you haul your boats around on top of your car, always have a strap on the back and front. Very important. So the one question I see all the time on the kayak and canoe pages, especially from the beginners, is what kayak should I buy for the very first time? What would be my best choice? These are just two that I have out of four. This is a recreational kayak, would be a sea kayak. When you're first starting out, it's kind of hard to decide which kayak should I buy. So I'm gonna explain a few things today and maybe this will help clear things up. Now, for you pros out there, I know you're gonna have advice. Go ahead and give me advice on this video. Let me know what I missed. Let me know what I should know. Let me know what I got wrong. Now, the one kayak I don't have here in the lineup is a sit on top. And the reason why is because I actually don't own a sit on top. It's not really my favorite kayak to have. I've used them before. I've paddled them before. I just feel they're just a little bit exposed. You're sitting out there, you got the sun, you got the waves coming in. You're just a little bit more exposed, especially once the weather gets a little bit chillier. It's nice to have a kayak that you can sit down in in case the waves come up. Now, if the waves get big, obviously they're gonna come inside. But you got your smaller little waves on ripples on the water in the fall and spring, kind of out of the weather just a little bit. And I kind of like that. A little bit more efficient going through the water. I've paddled a few sit on tops, but I just feel that once I get into a sit-in kayak, a recreational kayak, or obviously a sea kayak, they just go through the water so much better. Here's kind of your new version of the sit on tops. These are kind of like a new generation. Instead of just being flat, that you sit on them big and wide, these are more streamed and are pointed at the front, and I can see them going through the water a lot better than just your original sit-on tops. Yo, it's got some mainstream on it here. But as you can see, they're very easy to get in and out. So these are a hybrid between a sit-on top and also a recreation. It'd be pretty stable and it'd move through the water pretty good. These are Santa Cruz kayaks. You also have some paddle boards over there too that you actually stand on. Hey, you know, some places even give a guarantee. You can try them out for two weeks. If you don't like it, take it back and get another one. Dick Sporting Goods and Academy just may do that for you. And they're gonna be running some big sales soon. kayaks side by side. This is a Perception Swifty 9.5, which is nine and a half feet long. This is a current design Storm Sea Kayak, 
16 and a half feet long. So the couple things that you want to look at right away is how much do these kayaks weigh? This Swifty right here is about 39 pounds. You can figure about 40 pounds for the Swifty 9.5. Current design weighs about 63 pounds. So that may be a choice right there for you. If you have trouble with your shoulders, if 50 pounds is about as max as you want to carry, you might be better off going with Perception Swifty 9.5. Perception comes in the 9.5 and it comes in 11.5 and it goes up from there. So the kayaks, Perception has a giant range of kayaks that you can choose from. Basic rule of thumb, the longer the kayak, the better to go through the water, the more capacity. So if you're a person in the 250, 300 pound range, you probably wouldn't want to get a 9.5. You'd probably want to go with at least 11.5 and maybe a little bit bigger, just because of the weight capacity. If you plan on going on river trips and you're taking a lot of gear, it's nothing to come up with 100 pounds of gear that you're going to stack up on these boats. By the time you add your tent, your sleeping bag, your cookware. So think about that too. It's not only your weight, but it's also the weight of the excursion that you're getting ready to go on. This is what they call a recreational kayak. This area right here is called the cockpit. And it's nice and wide. Plenty of room to get in. So you can step in. You can sit down. You can put your legs straight. You can cross your legs if you want to. You have a lot of room to move in a recreational kayak. That is the drawback about a sea kayak like this right here. Once you go in it, you're pretty well locked inside it. Now, if it flips over, you can wet exit, you can come out of it if you need to, or you can barrel roll it and come right back up again. As far as moving around, you really don't have a lot of room to move in a sea kayak. For this one right here, I can put my feet out, I can put my feet back in. I've got room for my fishing stuff. So a lot of people like a sit-in kayak that's recreational. One big difference between these two kayaks is this perception right here does not have a rudder. And you might ask, what does a rudder do? This right here is a rudder. You'll find rudders on recreational kayaks also. Now what I'm doing there is I'm actually, there's pedals on the inside. I push my right foot forward and it'll actually turn the blade this way, which will turn my kayak right. If I want to go back left, I push my left foot forward and it'll turn the blade this way and my kayak will start to go left. So it makes it very easy to steer a boat. When you're in a boat like that Perception right there without a rudder, basically have to steer with your paddle. If you paddle on the right, your boat is gonna go left. If you paddle on the left, your boat is gonna go right. So with a recreational kayak, like this one right here, the Swifty 9.5, you're constantly struggling to keep the boat straight and it all depends on how you paddle. The better you get at paddling a boat, the easier it's gonna be for you to control that boat. When you have a boat that has a rudder on it, basically your feet are gonna control the direction of the boat. And so when you paddle, you just basically paddle any way you want. You can even paddle on one side the whole time if you want. And with a rudder, you're gonna be able to keep your boat going straight. When you have a recreational kayak without a rudder on the back, so you're constantly kind of figuring out how to keep that boat as straight as you can so you don't look like a snake going down the water like this. That's okay if you're just out there to have fun, but if you're looking to put some miles, if you're looking to be efficient with your paddling strokes as you're going down a river, then you need to be able to control that and try to get that boat to go as straight as possible. Now here's a little device that I got for my sea kayak and I just absolutely love it. I had current design actually install this when I order this boat custom. It is a built-in compass. It's great, especially if you get into a larger body of water where you really can't see the shoreline that you're going to. It's pretty far away, but you know you need to head in a certain direction. You can set your compass and that's how you guide your boat. 
very nice, especially if you're out on big water like Lake Superior, Lake Michigan, Lake Huron. You're going to go away from the shore pretty good ways. This is very important, and you could also have a condition where some fog would set in, or maybe a storm comes in, and you lose visibility of the shoreline. As long as you know the general direction, you can set your compass, and you can head in that direction and get back to shore. Very important. If a fog bank come in and you were on Lake Superior and you were unexperienced and didn't know it, you may actually be turned around and head out to sea rather than be coming into the shore, even though to you it seems like you're going with the waves, it could be an offshore wind. Got to be careful. Now both of these boats have nice compartments and that's important when you're looking for a boat because this is where you put your gear that you don't want to get wet, this is where you put your lunch, maybe put some drinks in here, but you can see the current design storm, it has a storm lid and then it also has a neoprene gasket covering on the inside to keep water out and then you open it up and you have a pretty good area on the inside that you can store things in. I've been camping for a week before on the rivers with this kayak right here and had plenty of room to stuff things way in the tail, stuff things up front. It worked pretty good. So that's a pretty nice design. You've got your Perception Swifty. It, what it has, a plastic lid that pops on. It's more like a, I would more call it more like a rubber. It's more like a rubber lid. That's very nice. That would be pretty much waterproof unless it was submerged. And then you have a hatch in here to put important things. Not as much space as you do in the sea kayak, but still, you have a pretty good storage space in here to use. That's pretty nice. A little bit of an advantage on the Storm Sea Kayak. It actually has a hatch on the front, which can hold a lot of things. You can see the perception does not. But there is room to put stuff up in front of your feet. Okay, here in the state of Indiana, you're legally supposed to have a life jacket on board and accessible, but you do not have to wear it on the water. Check the regulations in the state where you're at, Michigan, Ohio, Tennessee, Kentucky. Make sure the regulations say that as long as you have it with you, you're okay. As long as you don't have it stored underneath the bulkhead with a cap on it where you can't get to it, that's not okay, at least in Indiana. So check out the regulation. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take his boat for a little spin and kind of show you how it works. gives you a general idea how it works. The rudder system, got a little bit of wind trying to blow me back into this bay, which was kind of messing with me a little bit. If I pushed the rudder with my left foot, my boat was going left. If I was pushing the rudder with my right foot, my boat was going right. I was kind of dealing with the wind a little bit, but if you noticed, once I got it going, it was, I can basically just keep paddling normal. No extra strokes on the right, no extra strokes on the left and the boat will go where I want to. 
big advantage, but the Sea Kayak has a lot of speed to it too. They're the fastest boats on the water by far. If you're gonna take a long trip, it's always nice to have a Sea Kayak that can really cruise along that water fast. Almost like an arrow going through the water. Very, very quick. Alright, I'm going to give the Perception Swifty 9.5 a little test drive out here in the beautiful water of Patoka Lake. A lot easier to get into than a sea kayak, for sure, but not as easy as a sit on top. Sit on top, you just plop down on top of them and you're ready to go. This takes a little bit of ability to get into it, it's not bad at all. Just step into it like this right here, there we go. That's pretty easy right there. And away you go. Nice thing about a boat like this, it's very maneuverable. You can notice I can spin it on a dime. Very good for small, narrow, winding rivers with some current. You can really maneuver in a small boat like this. Recreational kayak is kind of the best of all the worlds. If you want to get some sun on your legs, no problem. But, legs start getting burnt, get them in the shade. Recreational Swifty 9.9 .9 perception. Good starter boat. Very easy to get in and out of. Absolutely tough as nails. You can drag it on rocks, you can hit rocks. You can take it over sand, not a problem at all. Sharp objects might pierce it, but most of the time these boats are kind of indestructible. I've heard many stories of them falling off a trailer, bouncing down the highway, you pick them up, put them on, and take off again. If I had to make a suggestion for your all-around boat to have, I would go with probably like this Perception Recreational Kayak. The one with the elongated cockpit on it, easy in, easy out, but still gives you some of that coverage. You're not exposed to the weather 100% like you are in a sit on top. Sea kayak? Nah. Unless you think you're going to start taking longer journeys and you're going to go out on big bodies of water, it's a luxury to have. Many people have asked me before, Mr. Lawrence, if you had to get rid of your sea kayak, your recreational kayak, or your canoes, which is the one that you would keep? And man, that'd be a hard decision. Anymore with my LA Film Fest business, I definitely use my canoe a lot more because I've got so much camera gear that I take along, lighting systems, things like that. The canoe is so nice because it has so much room. And it's a solo plus, so I solo it. I tell you, I hope that answers a few questions for you. I appreciate you subscribing to the channel. Smash that subscribe button down if you would. It makes my life so much easier to see them subscriptions go up. And if you subscribe, for every 50 subscribers, I'm gonna give away a custom, brand new, right hot off the press, LAF Space Film Fest, that's capital LAF Space Film Fest decal. You will love it. Don't wanna put it on your car? Put it on your refrigerator, put it on your wall, put it in your garage, put it on your workbench. Give it to a friend that would appreciate it. I'm gonna randomly pick one of you guys or gals and I'm gonna send it to you. I customized it myself. Send me a comment if you have any questions on kayaks. Send me a comment. A lot of times if you comment and if I don't know, somebody will read that comment and they'll get back with you. Oh yeah, that decal 
That custom decal I was just talking about, it'll be a collector's item someday. So I hope this video answers some of the questions that are out there, especially if you're a beginner. And remember, never be afraid to ask. There's always somebody out there that's willing to give their advice. You just got to sort through all the advice like a deck of cards and figure out which one works for you. Well, the summer of 2021 is about halfway over. I hope you got out there. And if you haven't, what are you waiting for? Get on out there. Put some gas in your car, hook your trailer up, and go. Now, now is the summer of awakening. Get on out there and see what's going on. And if the summer heat's getting to you, head north. Get on up to northern Michigan. Even cross that mighty Mac and go to 12 Mile Beach. I've got some videos on it, too. Check them out. 12 Mile Beach can be beautiful, calm, serene. I've got some videos where I got hit by a gale on there. Wow. You have a good day.